All right, guys, remember what we're looking for. And don't trust anyone. Mabuhay or in kapampangan, luwid kayo. Welcome back to another video. It's me, Kirby Aralio, your friendly Pinoy historian. And in this channel, I make videos about our people's history, our people's culture, and everything in between. So don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and subscribe. So for today's video, I'll be reacting to the new trailer of Disney's upcoming movie, Raya and the Last Dragon. So the second trailer came out today, so I'll be reacting to it. And if you haven't seen my reaction to the first teaser trailer of Raya and the Last Dragon, check out the links up here or down below where I share a lot of my thoughts, a lot of my reflections about what I saw from this trailer alone. I shared quite a lot, so don't forget to check it out after this video. Maraming salamat po. Dakalpong salamat! So for today, I'll be watching the full trailer first, the full 2 minutes and 28 seconds of the trailer first and then share my thoughts share my thoughts towards the end so without further ado let's hit play all right guys remember what we're looking for and don't oh. trust anyone Ooh, lanterns <gasps> baby hey baby baby your parents hey uh who's baby what? <laughs> <laughs> really? A it's funny Ooh, the penguin. Monkeys. <gasps> Are those from Bhutan? Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> this is a funny we baby. Use someone like you. It's so cute. Let's catch you up. My name okay. is Raya. Our lands have been at war for as long as we can remember. Our people never see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. My daughter, I believe our people can come together again, but someone has to take the first step. Now, in order to restore peace, we must find the last the dragon. last dragon. I wish to join the fellowship. <gasps> Wait, is that Kublai Khan? I mean, I don't know, Benedict Wong. Ooh, rivers. We'll have to watch our backs. Yeah. We're not the only ones looking. Oh, is that the arrival? Six years of searching. Please let this be it. Oh, my dear sees you. Who said that? Really <laughs> need your help. Ah, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm not like the best dragon. <laughs> Have you ever done like a group project, but there's like that one kid who didn't pitch in as much, but still ended up with the same grade? Uh, we're doomed. <laughs> you and That's the dragon funny. are coming with me. Hmm. My sword here says we're not. <laughs> Ooh. Night. The world's broken. But we can't trust anyone. The world. Because we don't trust anyone. We just have to take the first step. Wow. Oh. I just shake change. Dragons can do that? Look how close my butt is to my head. It's gonna make digestion so much faster. Invaders. <laughs> that reminds me of my guinea pigs. <laughs> so yeah, um, in the beginning of the trailer, the first thing we see is a, a floating community, a floating city, a neighborhood, a market that's floating above water. My first reaction to it was that this is a very Southeast Asian um, scene to see, a very Southeast Asian community. You know, when you go to Europe, they have Venice with its, with its canals and this gondolas and stuff. Um, but if you go to Southeast Asia, throughout the, throughout the long history of Southeast Asia, you actually find a lot of these floating cities, a lot of these um, thriving um, centers of, of trade, of culture that are floating throughout Southeast Asia, complete with the rivers, the canals, the and hella boats, markets that are literally floating on boats. You can see it today in Bangkok, and even you know, in historic historically speaking, Manila used to be like this too. A lot of the rivers in Manila, a lot of the esteros, the canals in Manila used to um, resemble Venice, resemble Bangkok, resemble a lot of these floating cities. And again, you see these in the different communities that has been in Southeast Asia throughout its long history, throughout its um, centuries, if not thousands of years. You can see these, you know, from the communities around the Great Mekong River in Cambodia, um, in, in Vietnam, and you know, from there to, to Brunei and the Sulu Archipelago, you see these floating cities still around today floating communities. It's really nice to see that in the opening scene alone you see these um, very familiar scene, very Southeast Asian setting as one of the settings, as one of the 
um, worlds or one of the um, what do you call this? One of the places in this uh, made-up world because you know Raya again is a, a fantasy world. It's based on Southeast Asia, but it's still a world of fantasy. So it's nice to see a very Southeast Asian setting in the beginning of this trailer. In the whole like this floating city, you see lanterns lit up at night. There's just hella lanterns around the, the, this community. Um, so you know, if 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 you're not familiar with it, um, lantern festivals are very um, common throughout Southeast Asia. So you see it um, celebrated in Chiang Mai in Thailand, uh, from Chiang Mai to even my own hometown in Angola City, Philippines. Um, throughout Southeast Asia, we have these deeper traditions revolving around colorful lanterns with unique shapes. Actually, as I've mentioned in a few of my previous videos, the roots of the Filipino Christmas lantern or the parol, the parol that we know today actually has a deeper history in our indigenous cultures, in our Southeast Asian cultures, because again, it's related to a lot of the traditional lanterns throughout Southeast Asia. Um, actually, even the shapes of our pre-colonial pre parol, our traditional older paroles, the, some of a lot of the shapes are actually similar and closer to what you see here in the trailer for Raya and the Last Dragon. And actually, I also made a reaction to Disney's um, Christmas ad, a Filipino theme ad um, from our family to yours, where they also depicted uh, building a parol. So check them out. Check out my reaction to that and my video about the history of the parol. To learn more about the deeper significance of lanterns in the cultures of the Philippines. Anyway, some more random thoughts that I saw throughout the trailer. Um, I saw a rambutan, a very Southeast Asian fruit, the rambutan. Um, I love rambutan. What do you call this? The previous trailer gave me a lot of the Avatar vibes. Um, and this trailer, on the other hand, gave me a lot of... Um, very Star Wars and Game of Thrones vibes. This whole thing of searching for the last dragon as the last hope to unite the world, to fix their world, um, reminds me of the search for the last Jedi. So very Star Wars. And speaking of the dragons, um, speaking of the dragons, as I've already covered and mentioned, actually, I kind of talk a lot about dragons in my reaction to the first Raya trailer, so check it out. Um, but yeah, speaking of dragons, dragons are, again, found throughout the mythologies, the diverse mythologies of Southeast Asia. And you know, these are not just the Hindu Buddhist Nagarajas that I mentioned in my previous um, reaction to Raya. But also, the indigenous dragons are found in our many indigenous mythologies. For example, we have um, the Bakunawa of the Visayan people, the mythical dragon that devoured the many moons and that, you know, causes the eclipse. And for us Kapampangan people, we also have a similar myth mythological dragon, a mythical dragon or bird-like dragon that devours both the sun and the moon. And that's what we call the Lau. And in fact, um, I actually forgot to mention this in my first reaction to the first um, Raya trailer, but you know, you can actually see these um, indigenous dragons depicted in our traditional swords. So not just the Nagarajas on the Keris or the Kalis that, I've sh that I showed in my last reaction, but also the, you know, the long mighty Kampilan, uh, this long mighty sword known as Kampilan or in Kapampangan what we call Talibong. Um, you can actually see in the handle of it, on the hilt of it, there are often carved depictions of the Bakunawa or the Lawu. Um, among other mythical beings. And actually, the, the, the shape or the appearance of uh, the depiction of Aquafina's dragon or the last dragon in Raya's world resembles some of the traditional pommels. The pommel is the, the knob at the end of the, the handle of the sword. Our traditional swords in the Philippines have this distinctive pommel that has a very distinctive horn that resembles the dragon in Raya and the Last Dragon. So now, um, let's get into a more serious note, a more deeper um, reflection, a deeper reflection, deeper thoughts, deeper feelings that I had while watching this trailer. Um, so you know, in the beginning and throughout this, this trailer, we see the baby. The baby was cute. It was really cute. Um, I want to pinch her cheeks, um, squeeze her cheeks, her little uh, buns. Um, she was mischievous, but very, you know, she's so adorable. And I mean, you know, we, we don't really know um, the backstory of the baby yet. I mean, she's adorable, but it really got me thinking, um, why was she alone? Um, why was she left behind to, you know, basically fend off for herself? And for one, this reminds me of a lot of the children um, in, the, in, in the more impoverished communities in Southeast Asia, where they're basically left to find ways to make a living by themselves at a very young age. And it also reminds me of a lot of the babies that, that were left behind because of sex tourism. 
You know, the children that were abandoned, you know, mostly by Westerners who prey on the most vulnerables in our communities. And if you've been to Southeast Asia, you know what I'm talking about. And actually, these are the kids, the children, the playmates that I grew up with. Amerasian kids that never really got to know their fathers, that never really got to know their family, their roots, where they came from. Kids that are, you know, at a very young age were left behind to make a living for themselves, to support their, their families even. So for those who may not know, um, a huge chunk of my life was actually spent growing up in the Angeles City, Philippines. Um, so one of the houses that I grew up in, that I lived in, was actually a short walking distance away from the infamous red light district right next to Clark Air Base. So Clark Field or Clark Air Base was once the largest, the biggest US military base installation outside continental America. And this huge base in turn created this infamous red light district. A red light district that, you know, um, where streets are swarming with um, predatory tourists who are preying upon the most vulnerable in our communities, not just women, but also men and children. And you know, growing up in that neighborhood really opened my eyes to a lot of the injustices in our communities. At a very young age, my eyes were open to a lot of this exploitation, to a lot of this injustices and oppressions in our communities. And you know, this issue of the admiration children being left behind um, is actually still a major problem, a major issue in the Philippines. And actually not just in the Philippines, but also in other parts of Southeast Asia. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, um, many of my admiration childhood friends are, you know, amazing and inspiring. The things they accomplished despite all the odds are really inspiring. I look up to them. But you know, this issue, this problem that placed them, this, that, you know, that placed these obstacles in the first place, you know, it must be eradicated. And you know, I'm, I'm also not here to shame sex workers. And if you get to know them, a lot of them are actually great people. But you know, this this whole system or this whole society that allows for these exploitations, oppression and injustices to happen or even worse to thrive and worsen, it must be eradicated and um, we must do better to address these issues that leads to these situations. And you know this issue is really close to my heart. But perhaps the most enlightening, most empowering thing that I saw in this trailer are the women. The warriors, the leaders that you see throughout the trailer are women. And this is actually reflective of the many cultures in Southeast Asia. You know, in Southeast Asia, where women were actually historically have always been held with high regards. And you know, this thing, um, this, this reverence for women are actually somewhat distinct to Southeast Asia, um, especially if you compare it to a lot of the other cultures like the West, for example, or even East Asia, or even South Asia and the Middle East, where women are generally considered as secondary to men, not in Southeast Asia. Throughout the history of Southeast Asia, throughout its long history, women have always been, in general, have always been, you know, they were always valued equally to men. In fact, in many of our languages, we don't even have gendered pronouns. Throughout our different um, indigenous cultures, a person's value was not dependent on their gender. In fact, daughters in Southeast Asia were welcomed with much enthusiasm, much like sons, unlike in other cultures. And you know, from marriage to divorce to having power over their own bodies to having power over their own sexualities, um, women in Southeast Asia's long history have always been empowered. And actually, in some or many of the cases, women actually have more privileges than men. In fact, we have a lot of matriarchal cultures, matriarchies that are found throughout our diverse cultures in Southeast Asia. Asia, diverse indigenous cultures in Southeast Asia. Like for example, from the Binangkabaw in Sumatra to my own people, the Kapampangan people, at the very core, is a very matriarchal culture. In Southeast Asia, in our diverse indigenous cultures, it's normal to actually see women as warriors, as fierce warriors. In fact, many kings throughout Southeast Asia's history are known to have fierce women as their bodyguards. And you know, this is not actually um, limited, it's not just limited to the past, to the distant past, this forgotten past of our ancestors, but also in the more recent history. For example, during World War II, um, there were actually many women warriors, guerrilleras, who led armies, women, female generals who led their own army, who actually formed their own armies, their own guerrilla armies to defend and liberate their communities in the Philippines during World War II. That's amazing. And I know this because my own Lola, my own late Lola Feli, um, and her sisters, all her sisters, they were among the 
these fierce guerrilleras that fought for the liberation of the Philippines at a very young age. So yes, being a female warrior is not uncommon in the history, the long history of Southeast Asia. And you know, we even have this um, legendary epic warrior princess named Urduha. So learn more about it, look it up, um, that Ibn Batuta recorded when he was traveling throughout Southeast Asia. Some believe that Urduha is actually from Pangasinan in the Philippines. And again, if you look at the history of Southeast Asia from back then to the present day, we also have a bigger percentage of women as rulers throughout the history of Southeast Asia compared to other parts of the world. We actually have a lot of these epic legendary queens in the history of Southeast Asia. And in general, most of this, most of these epic queens, these legendary queens in the history of Southeast Asia, they're always often associated with prosperity, with benevolence, with security, with greatness, with the golden age. And some example of this would be, like for example, um, Jagitarja, also known as Tribuana, the great queen of the Majapahit Empire, an empress. And another one would be my own ancestor, my own direct ancestor, Dayang Kalangitan of Luzon, the queen, the paramount ruler of Luzon, who became a paramount ruler in her own right. So yes, there's a lot of interesting histories that have been forgotten in the mainstream narrative. Um, yes, it is amazing to see women, female warriors, and leaders at the center, at the and in the front and center of Raya and the Last Dragon. And this is perhaps the biggest takeaway that I got watching this trailer of Raya and the Last Dragon of women being in the front and center of this world, much like in Southeast Asia. So yes, I am excited to see the movie on March fifth. So yeah, to learn more about the histories, the colorful histories of our ancestors, check out the links up here or down below for more playlists about the colorful history, the rich cultures of the Philippines and of Southeast Asia. And speaking of our ancestors, check out my upcoming coloring book series called Color Our Roots, featuring characters based upon our own ancestors. And my upcoming book and zine series called Know Our Roots, about our people's colorful history rich cultures, and everything in between. So check out the links below to pre-order your signed copies today and download a free sample today. So yes, don't forget to pre-order your signed copies today. I'll be signing them in the indigenous um, scripts of the Philippines. One um, by Bayin of the Tagalog people and Kulitan of the Kamampangan people. So if you pre-order today, I'll be signing them in by Bayin and Kulitan. And if you pre-order today, you'll also get a free sample, free download of free coloring pages. So don't miss out. And that is it for me today. If you like this video or learn a thing or two, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments below what you think about Raya and the Last Dragon's second trailer. And special thanks to all my patrons over at Patreon for your continuing love and support in helping me make more videos like this. Maraming maraming salamat po. Dakal pong salamat. So for those who want to help me make more videos like this, show your support and please, please be my patron or get a copy of my books or any of the merch linked down below. Dakal pong salamat. Maraming salamat po. Dakaghang salamat. Agyamanak. Terima kasih. See you next time or in Tagalog kita kits and in Kapampangan. Mikitix.